in this video. Today I'm going to try to fix up this Groove E soundbar. It's a Bluetooth soundbar. It's a cheap and cheerful one. Sort of thing you get from Amazon for around about £30. Interestingly, the reviews are okay. People are saying it sounds okay for the size and the price. It's supposed to have about 10 hours battery life and you can unplug this here and you put your phone in there. The idea is it's portable Bluetooth that you can use as a soundbar. Might be useful for things like barbecues and stuff if you just pop your phone on there just to give it a little bit more sound. This one is sold as no power and it's not drawing anything at all. But yet, there is a little light at the back here. And when I turn it on, that light starts going to like a Bluetooth light. Can you see it's like red, but there's like a blue one flash in there as well. But yet it's still not drawing anything and there's no power to it, meaning I can't turn it on or change any modes or doing anything. So it looks like the battery is completely flat, but at the same time, it looks brand new. It doesn't look like it's ever had any use. So let's get over to the mat and see what's wrong with it. Okay, we've got no evidence of any screws anywhere, but there might be screws under here, or more than likely, I say they're gonna be under this bit at the front, because I don't think under here there's gonna be enough, enough screws to hold it all together. But it would be the easier thing of the two to take apart. Let's see, oh look at that, you have a little rubber, that shows you it's never been used, it's still got the little plastic on it. No, there's nothing there. Okay, let's put that back. So we're going to have to prise this off here. Now I will use plastic to begin with because I'll get told off for using that, but I know plastic's not going to be strong enough to get in here. Yeah, and we're just going to have horrible green things everywhere left with the plastic. So let's not let's not talk about using metal tools on plastic. Because in an instance like this, you'll be there all day with plastic. There you go, you can see that's popped up nice and easy hopefully with minimal damage. Okay, I can feel it's just a little bit sticky in certain areas, so it's, uh, it's stuck in. Right, here we go, so we have two passive ones and uh, two little speakers here. I think this is 10 watts, so it's gonna be five watts each speaker. But then it's sold as like a 20 watt one because it says about max 20 watts. Don't really know what that means. Maybe that's just some sort of marketing. Anyway, we've got a load of screws around here, so let's undo them all. Now I hope because this is a rechargeable battery one that there's not just going to be an 18650 in here that uh, has gone completely flat. Right, again, this feels like it's slightly stuck in. Here we go. Okay. Why have we got so many wires coming over here? And why have we got so many wires coming over here? Is there uh, tweeters or something built into this? Oh, look, there's something at the front here. What is that about? I don't think I've seen that before. I can see a bit of a component here. Would they be, would they be little tweeters or something? What's that about there? Oh, this does have microphones as well. Apparently. Hmm. I don't know what, I don't know what that's about. But anyway, that's not going to cause a no power. Ah, 18650. Oh, annoying. Right, okay. You know it's just going to be flat. Let's unplug it and see if we have any charge left in it. There we go. So we should have, it's a 1200 milliamp hours, 3.7 volts, 4.44 watt hours. Please have voltage in it. What's going on? It's completely flat again. Boring! Oh, another 18650 problem. Is this the future of fixing just multiple items with faulty batteries in? I think possibly. Anyway, 
I buy them as no power. Sometimes it could be interesting and sometimes they're not. But we don't know. Obviously, it's no power because the battery's flat. But is it even being charged? So let's plug the charger back in and let's see, is there any charge going into the battery? Now, can I get onto here? Yeah, I can. I can actually get onto the board. Let's see whether we have anything here. Oh, look at that, 3.8 volts. So it is, there is charge coming out of the board. Right, excellent. Let's unplug that. So let's put this to one side. So it's something to do with the battery, but it might not necessarily be the battery itself. It might be the little protection board type thing that's on it. So let's open this up and see what's happening. I just want to get to this board part here. Oh, so does that go all the way to the negative that side and the positive that side? So is this just a little battery protection board that's built into the battery rather than the device? Right, these are 8205A, so I could look them up. Does this one look burn? Is that the same as these ones? No, it's different. DW01, that's different though. Not sure, is this just stickiness or is it, has it burnt? No, stickiness. Okay, maybe these are some sort of MOSFETs and this is something to do with the charging. Right, I think what I'm going to do is, let's go straight onto the terminals here and here and that will measure underneath, that will measure the battery, will it not? Right, so I'm going to go here and here. Now, so the battery itself is completely flat. The battery itself is flat. So if I plug it in now, and add charge to it. I wonder, will we see it grow if I go across here and here? Maybe it just needs to be plugged in for ages. But again, the cell shouldn't be used. It's gone below its safe low voltage. Right, so we're in there. Let's plug this back in. And now, let's go straight onto the terminals of the battery. Let's see if there's anything making its way into the battery. I can just go on here and here, can't I? I just want to see if it's going to grow. Yeah, it's growing. Right, well, it's not as low as the Bosch screwdriver, but it's still low. So as you can see there it is charging and it's putting the charge in nice and slowly. So if I just left this for probably about six hours, I'm sure that battery would probably work its way all the way up to 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 4 and up to 4.2 volts and then probably turn off and work just fine. The problem is it is extremely low now. It's gone below its safe level, so this battery wouldn't be safe to use again. But you can see that the voltage is going into it. And I'm sure if you left this for five or six hours, the item would come back to life again. Clearly, people are plugging it in for a few minutes and then giving up because nothing's happening. But something has caused this battery to go completely flat. Is it something on the board dragging it down or is it just a failed battery? So we're going to have to replace the battery and also we're going to have to do a current test to see if there's something on the board which is not turning off properly, which is draining these batteries down below their safe level. The problem is I can't just replace this battery because there's no markings on it to indicate what it is. It says it's a, we know it's an 18650, we know it's a 3.7 volt battery, we know that it's 1200 milliamp hours, but basically that is it. I do strip the casing off it, and then I do find markings on the inside of the actual cell, but it still doesn't indicate what the battery is. Right, well that brand there is Hongli. So again, I can't actually find out what it is. Uh, remember this has been repackaged, so I don't know whether it's come from the manufacturer like this or whether whoever's made this has put that board on it and repackaged it. But yeah, I'm sure something like this would work absolutely fine. But let's see if I can make my own one. So you should be replacing like for like, but the problem is I don't know what this one is. The markings don't bring up anything on Google. There's loads of blue batteries and there's loads of blue batteries with the same connectors but often they can be different capacities. And it doesn't say what the makeup of the battery is. Is it an INR? Is it an ICR? I haven't got a clue. But the thing is, it is a battery in its own right again. It's not being paralleled up or in series up with other batteries. So 
Is it that critical if the cell I put in is slightly higher capacity? Is an INR if this one's an ICR? I don't really think so. That's what I think anyway, but never copy what you see in my videos. So I'm making up my own battery. How do I know which one to put in? I don't. I'm just using a low powered 18650 that I have. Actually, it was sent over from Marcel from the Netherlands years ago, and he's marked it up as about 1100 milliamp hours. But when I look up the spec sheet of this one, it's supposed to be 2000 milliamp hours. But he got them out of a laptop battery, so these are not new batteries, and maybe they've got themselves weak over time, not too sure. Anyway, I tried to take off the little terminals on this failed battery and uh, they're so thin that they just fall apart really easily and there's not enough length on them then to put them onto the replacement battery. So I get some nickel and I actually make up new strips. I spot weld them onto the little battery protection board there and also I spot weld them onto the negative and the positive. I use a little insulating ring on the positive side just to give it a bit more protection and the spot welding goes on nice and easy because I've got plenty of length because I've done new nickel strips. My nickel strip was a little bit wide so I just got scissors, cut it straight down the middle. Yes, it's probably a little bit overly sharp and it's not overly straight but it's going to do the job just fine. So let me just show you the finished battery before I ruin it with Captain Tape. Nice. Let's cut off the excess. There we go. Right. Happy with that. Right, so now we should have the four volts at the cell, but have we got four volts here? So let's just double check here and here. We've got our four volts, but now what have we got here? Is it passing it through? It is. It is passing it through. Excellent, because I thought sometimes uh, things like that can kind of lock them out and you'll have to short a couple of pins to get them going. Now, what am I going to cover this up with? Let's put these back on to begin with. There. And here. So I think we're going to have to use Captain Tape well, these chips were covered up originally, so I presume they're all right with heat. Uh, it just looks so horrible, doesn't it? But I mean, it is, you know, it is spot welded on. It just doesn't look anything like that. I wonder, can you buy these? Because that must be some sort of heat shrink, isn't it? But the heat shrinks I've got don't feel like that. They're thicker and more rubbery. But you must be able to you must be able to get them. I wonder that they just come on tubes like a sausage and you just cut them to size and shrink them down. Uh, if you know what that is, please let me know because it would be quite going into the future, it looks like there's gonna be more and more items that are failing because of these annoying 18650 batteries. I say annoying, they're amazing, but it's just they just seem to be in everything and they seem to fail so often. But not, I only see 40 items, remember? So, you know, things that I have with an 18650 are going to be working fine. It's just I'm choosing to buy 40 items. But that looks awful. While if I had that on top of it, it would look, uh, it would look nice. All right, let's pop it back in. How am I going to be able to do this? I'm not going to be able to do the current test, am I? Unless I was to run... It's going to be too awkward to do because I have to... I'd have to cut the wires, and that's just creating more damage. I want to see if it's drawing anything, you know, when it's not in use. Is there any way I can do it? Ah, uh, not really. I'd have to, the wires, I can't balance a wire onto there. It's going to be a little bit hard to get my soldering iron in there and solder it all in, it's all glued in. The only way I could do it is to cut a wire. Oh well, I have to do it, don't I? Because we don't know what caused the battery to, to fail. So, I can't even really go onto the board because it's soldered underneath. I think we'll do it here, put a heat shrink on it afterwards. It already looks awful. Okay, so I'm going to plug this in. Right, we're in there. So if I was to get my meter now and go between here and here, that should tell me. 
whether it's drawing anything. So we're going to go to milliamps. We're going to put this one to here. Right, let's see now if it's drawing anything. It might pick up my fingers. But if it's anything more than like, you know, 0 0.0001. Right, so that isn't drawing anything, is it? So can we assume that it's just a faulty battery? That's just from my fingers, that. Okay, let's uh, put it to amps. I'm going to do the same again. This time I'm going to turn it on. We'll see what it goes up to. Oh, it's turned on now. It's ready to pair. Wow! Oh, it's got little lights. Oh, there are LED lights at the front there. Okay, so that's on at the back. So it didn't work in milliamps there, did it? Okay, let's turn it off, because clearly it's on, so that's why it's drawing. Let's turn it off now. And now let's see, are you drawing anything? No. No, so I think we can just assume that the battery, for whatever reason, drained itself. What's going on here? Oh, right, okay. Uh, let's uh, solder this up and heat shrink it, so I'm just going to unplug it. So I put a bit of heat shrink on, I twist the wires together, solder the twisted bits, and then put the heat shrink over it, heat it up to shrink it down, and uh, put it all back together. I'm then gonna charge it to make sure it's charging okay, and then what I wanna see is I wanna see the charger eventually go to zero amps. That means that it's charged and it's cut off, which is good, because I'm gonna keep on charging a charged battery. And then hopefully we can show it working at the end. I'll do it via aux, and I'll also do it via Bluetooth as well. Look at this, I've left it charging for 15 to 20 minutes and it's gone down to 0 0.08 amps. So basically it is definitely charging correctly. As it gets fuller, the amps are coming down. So when that gets to zero, it will be fully charged. Excellent news, it's gone to zero, zero, zero. So it's not drawing any amps at all. So now it's fully charged and it's not taking any more charge. So it knows when to turn itself off, which is great. Right, here we have line in. This is nine violets to champion. And you can see the lights going here. Now I'm going to connect up via Bluetooth. Bluetooth is ready to pair. Let me pair it up. Right, so it's now connected up via Bluetooth. And if I hold this down, it makes the lights come and go. There you go. And um, volume. And we can skip the tracks as well. So there we have it. And pause. So, yeah, not the most interesting fix in the world, but it's interesting why these 18650 batteries are failing like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's many products in the world that unfortunately go into landfill because of these batteries working their way down to zero. So as far as I can see, this isn't drawing anything when it's off. So I think it's just a faulty battery, but time will tell. If you enjoyed this video, give it a massive thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. Thank you so much for watching.